Lenny Carr Roberts. I own a couple of pubs in Hampshire, the Fox and the Bugle. I'm going to show you a recipe today that highlights fantastic fish from our local fishermen off the Solent. Today, I'm going to cook you a fabulous dish with grilled local cod. And I'm going to serve this with seasonal asparagus, great Jersey Royals, roasted peppers, a real Mediterranean feel to this dish with a bit of chorizo as well, a little bit of spice. It's a great dish that you can cook at home, something which you can do as a family, and I hope you really enjoy it. First, we're going to start with a fresh mayonnaise, which is going to be part of this dish. Two egg yolks, a little bit of white wine vinegar, and then we're going to add a little touch of Dijon mustard, just a spoonful, and then we're going to start to whisk. Now, always, always, if you get the opportunity, make your own mayonnaise. It's twice as cheap, tastes twice as good, and it really is easy to make. Keeps in the fridge for up to a week. And then here, I've just got some nice vegetable oil, simple oil or ground oil, something which is uh, non-offensive. You don't really want to be using olive oil in this. And then slowly and surely we will add just a trickle to start the vegetable oil. And eventually you'll see it start to come together, so I'll get a little bit thicker. Take your time in the first few minutes. You rush the first start, you might get a bit of splitting. And then as you start to emulsify that, be a bit more bolder. Get the oil in there. All right, that is coming together lovely. Now that is almost ready. The only thing we need to add, to add to that is a bit of lemon zest and a little bit of lemon. So a little bit of lemon zest in that. That just flavors it. And just a squeeze of lemon. That just sharpens it up a little bit. And that is our beautiful mayonnaise done. Right, okay, so that's the first part, the mayonnaise. And now we're going to do the warm tartar sauce. A Little bit of prep here. Here I've got capers, I've got gherkins, I've got onion, chive, parsley. I've got a bit of local forage wild garlic, which I picked on the way to work. Lime, I've got some beautiful fish stock, and I've got a bit of double cream. And this is gonna be the basis of our warm tartar sauce with that mayonnaise that we just made. So first off, we're just gonna slice these onions. These onions are grilotti onions, They're like a large spring onion. Uh, I prefer to use these in sauces this time of year just because they're full of flavor. However, you know, a shallot would be just as fine. All I've got here is a nice warm pan, a little bit of clarified butter. Go on that. Cla clarified butter is without the solids. So it's just butter, which is just pure fat. Good way of cooking. Take your time with onions, you know, let them sit 10 minutes. You know, slowly cook them, you get a better flavor. You get the juices coming out of the onion, you get a much better flavor, and it'll enhance every dish you do. So take your time, don't rush the onion. So this is wild garlic, it's everywhere. I mean, I drove into work this morning, I must have seen 10 fields of it. You know, woodland, you can find it, it smells fantastic. Uh, and this time of year, this is when you should harvest it. It's fantastic. Use it in oils, we blend it down with olive oil, keep it to one side. Uh, you can use it in omelets, in, you've eaten scrambled eggs. It's just an amazing product to use. And I like to use this, this time of year, in tartar sauce. So while the onions are cooking away nicely, I'm just going to chop the herbs, which is going to be the wild garlic. And this is going to go into our warm tartar sauce. It sits underneath the cod. with some chive. You could use any herbs. This is just the herbs which I've got from our kitchen garden at the back there. So chive, parsley, you could use chervil, you could use tarragon if you wanted, any herb you've got lying in the fridge or growing in your garden. And that is that done. That's ready for the tartar sauce. Now, we're going to go back to the pan. We're going to add our fish stock. You can buy good fish stock, but if I told you it's so easy, you just make it with a bit of offcuts of fish uh, add a pan with a bit of onion, a bit of celery, a bit of leek, a bit of carrot, bring it to the boil, simmer for 10 minutes, there's your fish stock. So save yourself a bit of money. 
that's going to deglaze those onions. It's going to sweat down a little bit. And when it gets to about a couple of tablespoons full, then we'll start going with the next process of this sauce. Add the cream to the stock, which is reduced slightly. In with the cream. So that's four tablespoons of cream in there. I'm going to let that reduce again by half. And that's going to be the base, the solid base for this tartar sauce. So next thing I'm going to do is chop the gherkins. This gives the acidity to the tartar sauce. Gherkins, capers, fresh herbs, squeeze of lime. It's delicious. Most people don't really use a warm tartar sauce. They like to have it sort of chilled. But actually, if you have it hot or warm like this, you probably never go back to the chilled stuff. Okay, in with those. Wonderful. Our capers. Straight there, ready to go in. And we've got our mayonnaise. And we're almost good to go. It's reduced by almost three quarters. And that is ready to get the flavourings in now. So, off the heat, otherwise it'll split. Add your gherkins and your capers. Okay, and then I'm going to add all the fresh herbs, the wild garlic the chives from the garden and the parsley all goes in like so and then we're just going to add the zest of a lime about half a lime is enough juice of just probably a quarter okay that's almost ready and now we just need to add that lovely mayonnaise that we made a few moments ago So I'm just going to literally add a couple of spoonfuls of this mayonnaise and that is our tartar sauce done. I'm just going to check the seasoning with a clean spoon, oh, a little bit of salt and that is perfect. Now that can just stay in the general warmth of your kitchen and it will keep for up to about an hour, maybe two hours and then just gently warm it when you need it but that sauce is now done. If you put it back in the fridge though, you'll need to take a bit more time to actually warm it up later. But that's perfect, it's all done. I'm going to wash the spuds now. Jersey Royals are great, but you don't want to peel them, you just want to just wash them. And the best way of doing this is water and a scrubbing brush, like a green scourer. This is a fresh new one. I'm just going to give them a little, little scrub. And you just basically want to get the little bit, the knobbly bits off. What you're left with is a beautiful potato because the flavour's in the skin. So a little bit of salt, in with potatoes, bring it up to the boil, 10 minutes they're done. So now asparagus, British asparagus, this is from Hampshire. When you peel it, just take off the outer nodules here like this, or feathers, we used to call them feathers back in the day. When you trim your asparagus, this last bit here sometimes gets a bit woody, but I'm going to give you a little tip on how to make the whole asparagus really tender. Take one inch, run your knife around the outside like so, and you have this. Get your knife, in you go, and just peel back. And this is just the sort of toughish end bit. And it's what we chefs, when you go to a good restaurant, you'll find all your asparagus will be trimmed like this. And it just makes it more tender and not so chewy. Okay, run the beans, you know, everyone grows these. I grow on my allotment. There's a horrible little vein down the outside here that's you know, chewy as hell. You don't want to be using that. So the way to do it is to cut it out. You can try and pull it with a string like this and pull it out like most people show you, like your granny would show you. She'd tell you to top the tail and pull the string out like so, which is all great to do that. However, the way to be fail safe is to cut it out completely. So run your knife down the end, get rid of that. Down the end again, get rid of that. You don't want to be using that, it's chewy and horrible. So now I'm going to get the green beans ready. Don't bother topping and tailing, just take the tail off. When you cut it, start from the top because this is all edible. Chop, chop, chop. That bit's not edible. Okay, so grab the pepper. And this is just going to be slightly roasted. So I'll get a nice pan, like so. Chunks of pepper. And then a little bit of olive oil, not much. Pepper, salt, and that's ready for the oven. Now they're not cooked at this point, but I don't know if you can see from there how green they are. To lock that greenness in, 
into the ice water. So that's a minute gone with the other veg, green beans. Again, you can see here, beautifully locked in, vibrantly green, into the ice, stops the cooking process. So these peppers have been in there, 170 degrees, for around about three or four minutes. The same amount of time as it's taken me to do the asparagus and the green beans. Beautiful little cherry tomatoes, straight in, three or four of those. Make sure you get them on the vine, they do taste better. And then back in the oven for another three or four minutes, 170. Chorizo in, this is just diced chorizo, normal stuff that you get. Don't go big, it doesn't need to be posh chorizo, just the run of the mill stuff you can get. Straight on the heat. No oil in there, there's enough fat within the chorizo. And you're going to need a bit of that oil from the chorizo. I'm going to save that and use that as part of the dressing for this great dish. Last stage is going to be the cod. Now this is line cork cod. This came into Brixham as a market yesterday. It's stunning. Now this fish has been seasoned about half an hour ago and that just firms up the flesh of all white fish. Nice sea salt. I'm using uh, Cornish sea salt here. As you can see, that's ready for the grill. The pan that we did chorizo in, like here, it's got this lovely oil in. This is the oil from the chorizo with smoked paprika, chili spices. It's great. We're going to use this as part of our dressing that goes over the vegetables. I'm going to add a little bit of Dijon mustard. It goes. I'm going to add a little bit of lemon juice. To that, I'm also going to add a little bit more white wine vinegar, just to sharpen it up. And just a touch of vegetable oil. And that dressing there, and you can see that lovely glossy dressing, that's like a, a chorizo vinaigrette. And that'll just liven up the vegetables as we put them in. We are on the home straight. We've taken our time, everything's ready. It's just put it together now, really. So what I'm going to do is get the potatoes and add them to my peppers. So here are the Jersey Royals, perfectly cooked, still warm. Beautiful. Just cooked, don't make them mushy. They've got to have a bit of bite to them. What I'm going to do is just chop these, like so, add them to the peppers and the tomatoes. Now the cod is about a minute away. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put these vegetables and chorizo under the grill and that'll just warm them through, ready for the finish of the dish. Okay, so that's the cod off the grill. But you've got to let it rest now. You know, people make a big mistake with fish. They try and cook it so it's fully cooked. This cod here is about three quarters cooked. It's going to cook itself in the next two or three minutes, just resting like a piece of meat. So our tartar sauce warm tartar sauce in the middle of the plate warm plates obviously and now we're going to build the salad that goes with it this is really simple i've got here those lovely tomatoes amazing peppers jersey royals oh it's a real mediterranean but hampshire feast on with our lovely green vegetables of asparagus hampshire asparagus and then we've got our chorizo, roasted chorizo. Gives it that sweetness and smokiness to the whole dish. A few more green beans on there. And remember that amazing dressing we made from the chorizo oil that we're just gonna add across the top. That gives a piquant acidity to that dish. So on with this beautiful cod. You know, it's so important we're supporting our local fishermen at the moment. Their industry collapsed just as ours did. You know, for us to be able to do things like this and deliver takeaways and, and send food out to people, it's really important. Now, cod skin isn't that great. So all I'm going to do here is just gently peel back this skin. And that is my beautiful line caught, local fisherman caught cod loin fillet with warm tartar sauce and a beautiful summer salad of Jersey Royals, runner beans, green beans, asparagus, and crispy chorizo. Mm -hmm.